Give me a minute and let's do a deep dive into the Russian economy. Over the summer, I was doing updates on the falling ruble about once a month. Now it's about once a week. And I want to go a little bit deeper in this one. It's not just the ruble, but let's take a look at some other data. So lately, the ruble has been trending somewhere between 97 rubles to the dollar to up to 101. You can see this screenshot is from yesterday. Yesterday's rate was 138. So what's going on over there? Now, the Ministry of Finance for the Russian Federation regularly publishes its uh, balance sheet, basically, right? Uh, revenues in, expenditures out. Although since the war began, they've been hiding much of the detail. So we don't have a lot of visibility into, say, what the funding sources are or what particular expenditures are. And they're citing uh, national security, right? They don't want the world to know uh, what they're spending their money on, what weapons systems, etc. So let's take a look. What I did was I went out to the Ministry of Finance for the Russian Federation, and you can do this too. And as I say, the Ministry of Finance uh, publishes its data. And so we get at least a top line view. And looking at oil and gas revenues, this is in billions of rubles um, for the last three years. We can see that, uh, and it's a cumulative chart. So last month's uh, income was added to the uh, this month's, etc. And so you generally get this nice 45 degree angle through the course of the year as those uh, revenues continue to come in. But if we look at the oil and gas revenue for 2021 compared to 2022 and 2023, um, we can see that even though Russia was selling more gas, it's making less money, uh, way less money, way less money than two years ago, certainly. And that's a problem since it's 60% of their economy. And it's this is why um, Russia posted a $47 billion loss last year. Now, if we take a look, the funny thing is, here's the funny thing. And this is the part that I cannot wrap my head around. The non-oil and gas revenues are on the rise. Where is Russia suddenly getting these new income sources from? I don't know. No one knows. They don't tell us. They simply make the claim that this new money is coming in. Now, in an economy that's under sanction, where you don't have products coming in, is it possible that a whole new entrepreneurial class has sprung up and is generating these new revenues. I guess it's possible. Anything is possible. But it is curious how the non-oil and gas revenues consistently make up the gap in the oil revenues. It, it's quite a coincidence quite a coincidence. Now, on the opposite side, on the outflow side, what we see here is that expenditures are way up. Spending is way up. And it's all deficit spending because the money is not coming in. And so what we see, if we look at the final chart here of surpluses and deficits, you will note that for 2023, everything is in the red. There is no surplus of cash. And we see this giant, uh, what, 2.1 trillion ruble deficit from last year, or what was about $47 billion deficit last year. This spells potential disaster for the Russian economy moving forward because they've been spending to make up for these deficits out of the sovereign wealth fund. 
At the rate that they're going, the sovereign wealth fund will be exhausted somewhere between June and December of 2024. Russia will be bankrupt if it doesn't make a change. Like, go the fuck home, please. Get out of Ukraine, please. That would be a good start. Stop spending a billion dollars a day on this insane genocidal war.